This video is sponsored by no one. The computer reviewed is one I purchased and wanted to share my thoughts with you. Last year I did a review of the B-Link Mini S, and just recently B-Link released the update to that model, the Mini S12. I picked this up on Amazon with a list price of $169, but as luck would have it, there was a $20 coupon, so I paid $149 before taxes. Included with the computer is a user's manual, a 12 volt 3 amp power supply, VESA mount with screws, and a short as well as long HDMI cable. I'll go over this new model and test performance. After that, I'll go over the key differences between this and the older model. Before we go any further, I'd like to say thank you to the nearly 3.1 thousand subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so and selecting notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Thanks in advance. This machine incorporates the recently released Intel N95 processor built on Intel 7 lithography with a boost clock of 4.3 GHz, 15 watt TDP, and 6 MB of L3 cache. On the front, we have two USB Type-A ports, a combination headphone mic jack, a power button, and back on the far left, there is a BIOS reset switch. The specs say the USB ports are USB 3.2, but do not say what speed. Through some testing, I believe they are rated for 10 gigabits per second. Around back from left to right, we have two more USB 3.2 ports, a gigabit network jack, dual HDMI 2.0 ports capable of 4K 60 Hz, DC power input, and a spot for a Kensington lock. The bottom adds a new feature, a pull handle for taking the bottom plate out, after removing the four screws of course. After working with some of the minis, I can appreciate this. Inside the cover, there is a spot for a 2.5 inch drive connected to the mainboard by a small ribbon cable. Memory is a single 8GB stick of crucial DDR4-3200. There is only a single SODIMM slot, but it can handle up to 16GB of memory. Storage is provided by a 256GB M.2 NVMe drive, though the slot is only Gen 3 X1. Down in the left corner is the Wi-Fi 5 card with Bluetooth 4.2. There are 5 screws to remove the main board from the case, and I had an issue with one of them. With it out, we can see the CMOS battery along with the heat sink and blower. I didn't tear down any further than this, but here are some pictures I grabbed. Back together, it comes with Windows 11 Pro installed. Setup is simple, and there doesn't seem to be anything more than standard Windows 11 programs. Note that this is only a surface deep look of course. The speed of the NVMe drive isn't as fast as some, but that is due to the PCIe 1X slot and I don't think a faster drive will be any help here. YouTube playback was good, with the 4K 30fps sample only losing one frame over 2000 and my 4K 60fps sample losing about 4 frames over 2000. A completely usable experience it seems. Local file playback of bit rates over 100 megabits per second were no problem at all. Gaming though, I'm still not testing anything more than Super Mario World widescreen. It can run at 61fps just fine. Benchmarks look pretty good, as you can see, a slight increase over the previous Mini S. Also, here it is incorporated with all the other Intel-based mini PCs I've tested. The BIOS is really pretty open, and I'm sure that's why there is a reset switch. Temps seem to idle around 48 degrees, and during a Cinebench run, max out at 85. Power draw at idle is 9 to 10 watts, and seems to max out around 23. Looking at the outside of the Mini S and the Mini S12 side by side, you can't really see any differences. Around back, vents have changed some, and the top has a new pattern on it as well. The Mini S had USB 3.0 ports, with the S12 having USB 3.2, and all else outside looks the same. 
The big differences are the updated processor coming to the N95 from the Celeron N5095 and NVMe based storage where the previous model could only run M.2 SATA. They could each support up to 2 terabytes of storage in their respective formats though. Both have a single SODIMM slot, but I erred in my previous review stating that you could only run 8GB in the Mini S. That is not true, and both models can run a max of 16GB. Bluetooth is also upgraded from 4.0 to 4.2. That about wraps things up. What do you think about the Mini S12? Is it something you'd be interested in at that price? True, you can get older desktop CPU machines at a lower price, but this uses considerably less power and benefits from newer instruction sets and maybe even some internal GPU upgrades. What do you think about the switched format? Let me know down in the comments. Or just write spaghetti in the comments and I'll know you've made it this far. This wraps up the Mini S12 review video, a nice upgrade from the previous model. Thanks again for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible.